Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! The barbell hasn't changed in over 100 years. I can take a 25-pound plate, and we'll go out on the turf, and I'll, I'll have you hating life. We talk about straining your gut, pushing past that comfort level. I want a lot of energy. What better breeding ground is there for being a success in life than the weight room? Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Coach Mac. This is episode number 58. I want to thank each of you guys for sending questions in each week and sharing these on social media and leaving ratings and review on iTunes and the whole deal. I just really appreciate that. And, uh, again, I do this just to try to give back any way I can to help be helpful to anybody that um, that sends in questions. And, uh, you know, that's how this works. You know, if you send in questions uh, down below in the comments, um, I add them to you know a future episode, or if I have time in this episode, I will uh, address them there. I typically, go about three to four questions each week, and uh, I try to to be as helpful as I can and, and try to combine as many different questions that I get. So you can email me always. You can post on social media. Uh, follow my coach page on Facebook at R McKeefrey or uh, at Play underscore US. And leave questions there. And uh, I'll make sure to address those. Also, want to thank our sponsors: Sornex, Samson, Intech, Iron Grip, Woodway, Train Heroic, Gym Wear, and Versapoy. Only partner with products that I believe in, and uh, appreciate them for their support. So, I want to jump right into this. Uh, Nick asks, um, "What is your biggest challenge? What was your biggest challenge breaking into the strength conditioning field?" And Nick, I mean, uh, I've been in this for twenty years now, and so. Uh, my biggest challenge uh, early on was uh, when I got an email was just becoming a popular form of communication and social media really didn't exist. So coming out of a small school with no network uh, was the hardest part uh, of breaking into the business. And so I, I remember writing specifically 270 letters, uh, waiting for those letters to come back in. in and uh, I, I kept the rejection uh, wall uh, on a cork board in my uh, – office slash second bedroom or whatever you want to call it. And, and uh, I use it as motivation. You know, I don't get those rejection letters. Not everybody sent one, but, um, but I used it as motivation as I went through the, the business. And so uh, just being able to network and, and to build, you know, let people know that I existed um, was probably my biggest challenge, but I think it's much easier uh, for coaches that are getting into the field uh, at this point. Joe asks, uh, what is one thing you wish you could tell your younger self after all, all of the experience you've gained? Um, I've gotten this question a, a, a couple of times. I've gotten a lot in our play masterminds or our little mastermind sessions that we run um, at the play summits. And, and basically, I, I would tell uh, my younger self that I can be passionate without being emotional. Um, I think early on in my career, I tried to, um, you know, basically push my passion on people. You know, this, this is a profession that I chose to do. It's one that I would give, you know, 12, 14 hour days for, uh, time away from the family, all those things. And so when that one athlete would come in and didn't have the attitude that I wanted them to have, um, oftentimes, um, I would have an emotional response to that. You know, one, at one point I threw a plate at a kid. And you can still have ultimate accountability in the program and you can have, um, you know, uh, compliance and all those types of things. If uh, you just take the time to get to know really what the issue is, if, if that athlete would walk in and they were late, uh, you know, as long as I have communicated the proper, you know, uh, you know, accountability structure uh, to that, then I would simply, you know, that sucks. You know, I understand, you know, I've been late before too. But here's what we got to do to to address that, and so that the, the problem was addressed. Oftentimes, what happens is you have that emotional response, and it can lead to you breaking down a relationship um, because you want to cuss them out or you want to get after them or or whatever. And uh, you're just trying to have this. You're trying to to show them your passion, but uh, really that uh, your emotions got the best of you. So. Um, that's what I'd go back and tell myself. That's where most of my mistakes occurred was, uh, relationships and, and, you know, the art of coaching. And, uh, I wish I would have had somebody in my corner to kind of tell me those things, um, early on. Alyssa asks, 
Hi, Coach. I'm currently getting my under, undergraduate degree, and I, rese- and I researched into shedding industry more and seeing I should become a member of the NSCA. I wanted to get your opinion on when I should be thinking about joining and getting a certificate. And uh, that's a good question. It sounds like you're you know, just getting into the profession or starting off and still in school. And uh, my advice would be to um, basically uh, become a member as soon as you can. Um, you want to, um, you know, join up, uh, pay your membership dues. What that's going to do is going to get you access to the journals. It's going to get you access to the website, uh, both of which are fantastic resources for you to be able to uh, learn from early on. Uh, be reading those, that, soaking that knowledge up as much as you can. And, uh, you know, and just uh, being a sponge, you know, that way. Uh, I think in your senior year is when you can take your exam for the, the NSCA, CSCS. Uh, in my opinion, that's the one that you want to get. It's the most versatile cert- certification out there. Um, I think there's a lot of pluses to it. I think there's some, some minuses. I think, you know, some of the minuses, the CSCCA addresses with the mentorship and some things like that. Um, I'm a fan of getting as many certifications as you can. Uh, I don't like necessarily the alphabet soup, but um, CSCCA, NSCA um, are, are two that you, you can't get employed unless you have those. So um, getting those two, I think, is very important. So um, I would become a member as soon as you can. I would get certified in your senior year. That just makes you more marketable for um, you know different GA jobs, internship jobs, uh, things like that that you're going to need to get that practical experience to uh, – to go on. Jeff asks, I am currently trying to develop a training philosophy, uh, have been researching other programs and coaches' philosophies. Would you be willing to share your training philosophy? Jeff, I, I often talk about this uh, when I present. Um, basically, I'm, I'm a principle-based strength coach, not a philosophy-based strength coach. I think when you base your program on principles, uh, those you can't dispute. So things like progression and overload, um, you know, for a muscle to have a neuromuscular adaptation, it has to be overloaded. And, and then for it to not to continue to have an, adapta- an adaptation, you have to continually progress that, you know. So people, we can have a conversation about, the be- you know, uh, those methods uh, with anybody, you know, and, and have, a, you know, a platform to be able to learn from everybody. Uh, when you become so philosophical in a, a specific type of method, what happens is you're, you know, you close your mind to the possibilities, you know, of what could be beneficial about all the different types of uh, programs that exist. So I would encourage you to, to be asking the questions, what are the principles that you should be following, um, talking to coaches, and rather than ask the philosophy question, um, I would be asking, um, you know, what their principles are and uh, what they believe in. You know, in addition to that, you know, my vision statement is to maximize each athlete's genetic potential and and every component of athleticism while decreasing the risk of injury in a manner that is safe and intense. And so um, I would encourage you to make sure that you come up with a vision that kind of helps drive um, what you're trying to do. And so um, that's that's basically what I would say in, in terms of the philosophical question. I know that that's common, but I would, again, I'd encourage you to go back to principles. It's just something that was taught to me uh, by Mark Asanovich and, and some of the mentors I've had. So, Mark, come on. Uh, so, I appreciate that as well, Mark. Want to end the show. Like I said, I'm just going to go, um, you know, three to four questions each week here. I uh, want to end the show, like I always do, with a quote. And the quote is from Bulldad O'Brien and states, There is an opportunity, and sometimes there's opportunity and sometimes joy in the chaos. And the unknown, and, and some so many times in our profession, um, you know, there is chaos, and there are unknowns, and you know, most of the time, when you take those types of risk or you you take on that challenge, um, there's going to be joy and there's going to be opportunity. So, hope that answers some questions. Again, if you're catching this on the replay, I know I'm doing this in the middle of the day. It's just what works best for me. Um, you know, post some questions below, share this, like this. You know, it helps spread the word and helps me help as many coaches as I can. But uh, post your questions, and I will get to them in a future episode of Ask Coach Matt. Take care, guys, and I'll see you later uh, next week. Take care. Bye.
That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree, on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Ron dot McKeefree. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk.